Hello, today we're about to start an introduction to MCNP. MCNP is an abbreviation for um, Monte Carlo and Parscale. Monte Carlo is a probabilistic way of computations. Probabilistic method. N indicates for electron, neutron, and photons. And particles is the type of these particles. Okay, then we have to start here defining what is a probabilistic method. For defining a probabilistic method, we need uh, to define a modeling and simulation. Modeling is the first step of solving a physical problem. Modeling it is a method of making a physical problem in a shape of mathematical equation. Sometimes it's called mathematical reformulation. Okay, then this is modeling. Then what is simulation? In order to define simulation, we need to differentiate between simulation and computations. Computations is process of solving E equations made in the reformulation process. Okay, then what's simulation? It's a process of showing how different systems interact with each other. Then, if I have some sort of uh, diffusion equation of neutrons. Fusion equation itself, this is the modeling of neutrons behavior. Solving this equation This leads to computations. What's the effect of this computation on, let's say, the control system? That's what we call simulation. We're here about to start the difference between different type of computations. Computation tools, computational tools are 
Cache not to use. I'll divide it into two separate methods or data. First one is stochastic. We call probabilistic method, the other is deterministic. Each one of them has its advantages and disadvantages. Let's start with the deterministic methods. Advantages I'm talking about nuclear engineering applications. One fast two easy input file. But the disadvantages one D two several approximations made in order to be able to solve the equation low accuracy. What about Mr. Stochastic? Let's start with its disadvantages. Very long runtime. To some extent, a difficult input file. Its advantages. Extremely high accuracy. Later, we will be talking about how the deterministic tool works and how the stochastic computational tool works. Let's start with the deterministic tool. Nuclear engineering application, we have a famous equation called the transport equation. Transport equation only can be solved in one dimension. And it can be solved in one dimension after making several approximations, like the PN method or SN method or discrete order method. From the transport equation, there is, depending on fixed law, which says that J equal negative D grad the neutron flux, we have reached the diffusion equation. Fusion equation is a partial differential equation. It can be solved easily using finite difference or finite element or whatever. This can be solved using code called when this can be solved using a code named a code named citation. The point is as we go from transport equation the integral differential equation to the diffusion equation, we pass through several approximations which means which makes our accuracy less and less and less and less. From these approximations, deterministic methods use homogenization. Homogenization means that if I have fill gap clad water, 
I make the organization related to their rate percent and their cross sections to make only one material with different materials composition with one density and all of these are homogenized. There is no partial place called fuel or partial place called flat and so on. This is the main theory of homogenization. Of course, we have several regions in diffusion in solving diffusion equation, which make us call it a heterogeneous design. But this, uh, the, but this is related to the diffusion equation, not related to the transport equation. In order to solve transport equation, you have to make cell calculations. That's what WIMS do: make cell calculations to find the new cross-section library that you want for corresponding to your problem. How about the deterministic method, the probabilistic method, or the stochastic method? Monte Carlo method depends on several probabilistic scenarios. It was several scenarios. Let's see, we have a rectangle. Now we have here a neutron, which will walk distance, let's say, mean free path. Then here, what, what will happen after it walks the mean free path? There is a random tune, there is probability distribution can be drawn. Let's say 0.1 probability that there will be an interaction. And 0.1 probability that there will no interaction occur. Therefore, here we will make a random number. Random number generates from 0 to 1. From 0 to 1, if it comes in from 0 to 0 0.9, then this neutron, after flying this distance, will interact at this position. If no interaction, then it will generate another random number. Then it will fly another distance and generate random number. What's the type of interaction? What molecule to interact? Let's say if we have H2O, then we know that oxygen is transparent, so we will give 0.95 probability for hydrogen and 0.05 probability for oxygen. Therefore, I generate another random number. If, run, if this random number lies between 0 and 0.95, then to interact with the hydrogen. If it, won't, if it lies between 0.95 and 1, then it will, it will, it will interact with the oxygen. Let's go with the highest probability. What's the type of interaction? Fission, elastic scattering, inelastic scattering, absorption. Let's see, according, let's generate another random number. According to this random number and where it lies, uh, this neutron will make an interaction. And after it had made, here it had made an elastic scattering, we have to evaluate E or omega and time. E because the following scenario will have to be to decide its cross sections, the total cross section for interaction or no interaction in the first place, and R for the distance of flight, then it will travel distance R with angle with solid angle omega and during time T. Then at this point, we will repeat the same process, generate another random soon. Until this neutron got lost, either by absorption or by going into an area that I'm not concerned about. So I'll terminate the history when it leaks out of, of my system. This is called only one scenario or one history. 
all of this is called one scenario or one history. What would happen if this if this random number came from 1.9 to 1.9? then this scenario will be false. Therefore, we need to repeat this process as many times as we can in order to find the convergence to our real case. The advantage of the stochastic method is that even there is a small probability here that interaction will, will occur with oxygen, but it is taken our, in our considerations as it affects our mean. Because the value of each one of these will affect in our mean. I'll calculate all the histories and let's say if I'm calculating the flux from history number one, history number two, history number three, history number four. Which one of them is right? I don't know. Therefore, I take the mean of all of these. Therefore, if one scenario of this has had the least probability it has affected my mean. Take, let's say, a million scenarios. Therefore, if one of them has affected a small probability, as has a small probability, it will affect my mean, but it won't affect it that large. So it will converge to the highest probabilities. Thank you very much for listening and please give me your feedback.